All right, today we're going to begin lab 5a. This is going to take us two days and it has three parts. So I thought I would explain what each part asks for. They're all fairly self-explanatory. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, try to assess this relationship between periodic table and electron configuration. So we're going to build a periodic table, but we're going to do so with the elements already in place. And we're going to attempt to determine if there is a relationship between uh, where an element is on the periodic table and its electron configuration. So you'll see that here in part one. And so in part one, it says using the blank upper section of the periodic table, write the electron configuration of each of the elements in the appropriate place. And so all we're looking for is for the ending electron configuration. Noble gas notation is perfectly acceptable. So I happen to know that for hydrogen, the electron configuration is 1s1. And for helium, I happen to know that it's 1s2. This is all that we're looking for. Again, noble gas notation is fine, but keep in mind that there are noble gases here on this side in group A, and I would rather that you not use noble gas notation for noble gases, but actually tell me what the ending electron configuration is. It should be fairly evident. Okay, in part two, we're going to be using some data. Uh, and so here is table one. And there are two parts of data, two columns of data. Uh, we're going to be comparing the atomic radius and something called the first ionization energy. It's not really necessary what these things are, although we'll be getting into that as the chapter progresses. But what we want to observe is how these things change with atomic number. So down here, you'll notice that there are two graphs. The first one is going to be graphing atomic number versus ionization energy, and the second one is going to be graphing atomic number versus radius. A simple point graph is acceptable, but I think you'll find that what's going on with these data is much more obvious if you connect the dots. So for example, let's say that I was looking at ionization energy and atomic number, and of course atomic number on the bottom is 1 two, three, four, and so on. And if I'm looking at ionization energy, up here it says that the hydrogen, the first ionization energy for hydrogen with an atomic number of one is 1,312 kilojoules per mole. So I'm simply going to plot this ionization energy, 1,312 kilojoules per mole, if that's 1,000, that's 1,100, 1,200, 1,300. And so 1,312 is right about there. And I'm going to continue with each of these data points until I have all of them plotted on this graph. There are 20. We're going up to calcium with an atomic number of 20. Again, it's probably more obvious if you connect the dots. Let's go to part three. The original periodic table devised by Dmitry Mendeleev in 1869 was done based not on electron configuration or molar masses, but more clues of what scientists knew about these elements back in the mid to late 1800s. So we're going to construct our periodic table based on clues. And so you'll notice that this one is blank and that it's not in particular laid out very similar to uh, the periodic table with which we're most familiar. And that's fine. What we have are a number of columns, uh, Roman numerals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and we also have 7 rows. And of these elements, 1a, 1b, 1c, there is a corresponding clue. And we're going to do the best we can to fill in the blank elements of this periodic table with the clues that pertain to each. So obviously 1a has a single electron in the 1s sublevel. Well, if you already did part one, you know that there's only one element with a single electron in the 1s sublevel, and that of course is hydrogen. And I would like it if you could please 
complete this periodic table to the best of your ability. I will have teams open the entire session, so if you run into difficulties or questions, you can certainly let me know. We're going to have two days to work on this lab. It will be uh, both tomorrow, which is, of course, October 1st, happy October, everybody, and Friday, October 2nd, and it will be due at the end of the session on Friday, October 2nd. All right, best of luck.